our friend uh, Antonio Neri and crew have made another acquisition. This time it's Pachyderm. Yeah, so uh, if you haven't been watching for the last two years, HBE is undergoing a huge transformation from selling boxes to offering essentially um, cloud and data services uh, on-prem. And they've made a lot of tuck-in acquisitions. They have built a lot of their own software. And if earnings, last quarter's earnings are any indication, if it's working, it is. Uh, HP had one of the biggest quarters that they have ever had in the past five years uh, last quarter. And I think you and I both had talked to an Antonio about this. And so what is Pachyderm, right? So we've seen uh, HPE integrate companies like Blue Data and a lot of a AI plays. Uh, a lot of them have to do with high performance computing that were um, very leverageable to any type of big data application. This one is about AI workflows and, you know, whether it's um, um, uh, version control, auto scaling, dedupe, cloud and with cloud and on-prem uh, capabilities, it's the entire AI pipeline that quite frankly, we've seen from the likes of Google, we've seen from AWS, we've seen from Azure, that essentially is a one-stop shop to cleansing the data all the way out to publishing the machine learning inference code uh, to, to that uh, device. So again, it's gonna be a, a short analysis here, but everything you would have expected for HP to do, first you saw moves in data and now you're seeing moves in AI. Yeah, I think that's punchy, Pat. I mean, look, you know, the data pipeline is complex. And as you're seeing things like Intel's decision to focus in on accelerated computing rather than focusing on just traditional compute metrics, you're going to see companies have to move from traditional um, infrastructure and infrastructure as a service. I mean, remember, HPE is really going to the industry and the enterprise right now and saying, you know, companies that feel obligated to move all your workloads to the cloud, there's another way to get the experience of the cloud without necessarily going to the public cloud for all things. Um, I think there's been no shortage of chest pounding here by you and me that we kind of called the hybrid cloud. And HPE has been a, a leader in terms of buying into the future of hybrid cloud and understanding that with its huge customer base, there is an approach to deliver as a service without, like I said, all the things going. So in order to do this though, it's gonna be service driven. If you look at what the public cloud companies have done extremely well, it's been having comprehensive data services. That's yeah. one of the things. If you look at AWS's uh, data pipeline, machine learning tools, you know, cause they have everything from, you know, tools for the most technical data scientists, all the way to tools for the complete novice that want to be able to play data scientists in the public cloud. A lot of these kind of private cloud offerings have lacked having these data pipeline services at scale, or they don't have as comprehensive set of services, which has been a big um, uh, motivator for companies and enterprises to move more workloads and more data to the public cloud. Again, we're public cloud believers here, I am, and I think, Pat, I can speak for you, but we also know that with the volumes of data and what companies are trying to do with many of their data, core data systems of record, edge data, egress is expensive, moving everything to and from the cloud can be expensive. And this is only one use case, but my point is, is that, you know, having more and more integrated machine learning pipelines, platforms, uh, things that customers can utilize, keeping their data on-prem and utilizing something like GreenLake, is going to be important. You and I have looked at the crawls. Uh, HPE's had a very comprehensive set of acquisitions and expansions and services. GreenLake is, at this moment, the most comprehensive of the on-prem cloud offerings that that uh, I can I can say. I mean, others are going to be investing and catching up, and you can count on the the Dell Apexes and the Lenovo True Scales, um, Cisco Plus. They're all going to be adding to these services, but. I like what HP is doing. I like that they're focusing on data. I like that they're focusing on um, uh, open source. They focused in on Kubernetes. They focused in on containers. So these are the things that they're going to have to do to be able to com uh, compete at scale. I'll be candid. I'm not super familiar with Pachyderm itself and its software, but
but I'm very uh, aware of what it's going to be doing. And so I think in terms of machine learning pipelines um, and being able to scale companies' uh, work that they're doing with these data sets, it was a valuable acquisition and, and it fits, which is something I think you and I always have to really look at is does it fit? Um, you know, the same questions you ask me when I buy companies. Are you sure that fits with what you do? Um, for HPE, it's very important that they're not just buying, but that they're buying right. Because in fairness, no matter how much they expand their offering in things like data, AI, machine, hyper-converge, storage, and, and elsewhere, it's going to be hard to keep up with the growth of services with this, companies like Azure, Google, and, and um, AWS that are going to be continuously adding pages and pages of, of, of both homegrown solutions and then, of course, companies that they're able to buy just because of their mass scale and size. A good acquisition, Pat. Um, good part of the portfolio. Hey, one uh, one thing I noticed in the press release uh, that had uh, uh, two benefits, data lineage and data versioning. Who does that remind you of? <laughs> Cloudera, maybe? Well, that could be an acquisition for the future, Pat. You know, I always thought uh, Cloudera and HP would make a great uh, a great combination, but... Well, you know, they're private again, so we'll see what happens. But, yeah, we'll be watching that quite a bit. Um, Pat, maybe their cloud sucks. Maybe. Maybe. I've heard that uh, spoken by some really smart people. So, Well, smart, smarter people have gone on stage and danced in circles and woo, 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 to get the crowd up and going. And I um, personally so love yeah. it. Uh, I got it on video, everybody. If you send me a message and, uh, and a payment, I will uh, send you a video of Pat spinning up a crowd. And he did a good job. Um, uh, he's referring to, just to let everybody know, Dan is referring to a keynote that I did at Cloudera's uh, signature event in, in New York City, where I did um, dance on stage and set my hair on fire to get uh, people's attention. And I did say, your cloud sucks to the audience. I did. I, I really did. I said I it. I even woke up to watch the rest after that. I appreciate that's, that. That's the job of a keynote speaker. 